What's up, YouTube? This is Too Raw for TV. So before I get into this video, I want to give a big shout out to George with the $50 donation via the Cash App. Much respect to George with the $50 donation. He says, mainstream hates the truth. Absolutely. Absolutely. They don't like to hear the damn truth. They don't like to hear the damn truth, man. So shout out to George for the $50 donation. Also, I want to shout out a YouTube channel. I just subscribed to the channel. I want you guys to subscribe to this channel as well. Subscribe to The Real Elise. That is The Real. E-L-E-E-Z-Y. Exclamation point. Exclamation point. He talks about similar issues to what we talk about here in the LDBC. You know what I'm saying? He sees the real. I just subscribed to his page. He's a young brother just starting out. Please subscribe to his channel, all right? So we can keep putting out the realness against all this fake noise that you see on the main in the mainstream. So shout out to the subscriber that donated $50. Shout out to the really Leasy. And to anybody else that want to uh, show love to his channel, you can do so in the links in the description box below via the PayPal or the Cash App, or in the pinned comment in the comment section. Now, um, I, I got to reiterate this because I was looking at a segment today on ESPN First Take, and there were uh, the question was, can the Nets win a championship without Kyrie Irving? And Kendrick Perkins says, hell no, right? And then goes on to talk about how Steve Nash has been exposed as a mediocre or poor coach, a poor strategist. And, you know, I, I couldn't even listen to all of what Stephen A. said. You know, I, I have such little respect for him at this point. Uh, just piling on about how it's Kyrie and Katie's fault that he's there, talking about Steve Nash. And, you know, they could have gotten other coaches to fill uh, that position. This is the thing that irritates me. Where was all of this last year? Where was all of this last year, or whenever it was when Steve Nash got hired as head coach? Might have been 2019. Where was all of this before? Well, we were saying from the get-go that Steve Nash didn't deserve that opportunity. Steve Nash wasn't going to be a really good coach. We knew this. Now he mentions Mark Jackson. and, and Come on, man. That's still in everything that we say. Don't you guys see this? We've been talking about how Mark Jackson ain't getting a job. How black coaches aren't getting interviews. It's the same good old boys network. And the few black coaches that they, they, that they do hire is like two of them. So we've been saying that Steve Nash was a poor coach. Don't all of a sudden now try to throw him under the bus because things ain't working out in, 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 in uh, Brooklyn. Now you want to throw him under the bus? We've been saying he was a poor coach. And my thing is, why does Kevin Durant need at least two Hall of Famers, minimum, to win a championship? Really, on this team, you're going to have three. Because, in my opinion, LaMarcus Aldridge is probably going to go into the Hall of Fame now. As he, He's probably going to play a couple of more years, health, you know, stay willing. He's going to have over 20,000 points. He's probably going to have over 10,000 rebounds. You know, even if he doesn't win a championship, I think he's going to, the way that they've lowered the bar, I think more than likely he's going to be a Hall of Fame. He, he might not be first ballot, but he'll be in the Hall of Fame. Hall of Famers. So this guy is probably going to have three Hall of Famers. Him, James Harden, and if Kyrie came back, Kyrie. In addition to Kevin Durant. Why is, and plus all of the other talent he got on his team. Why does Kevin Durant need these stacked teams to win championships, right? But Giannis, Giannis, you see what he's playing with, right? You see that. Brooke Lopez. 
Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday, who played like shit last night, a uh, bunch of role players. He can take those teams and win championships. And y'all want to tell me about Kevin Durant? Get out of my damn face. He's great, man, but come on, man. We have to start looking at these players differently. We have to start reevaluating these players. Now I'm not so sure KD's top 20 or 25 anymore. The same thing go to state. That team was stacked when he was there. Why does he need all of this fucking help? Why does he specifically need a, 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 a all-star Avengers squad to win a championship? And I'm getting tired of keep bringing Kyrie into the conversation. Like, Kendrick Perkins, oh, well, the reason why they're not going to go to the finals is because of Kyrie Irving. No. No. Uh-uh. No. No. I'm getting tired of that shit. We said from the get-go that Steve Nash should not have gotten that position. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you need an experienced coach. First of all, even before that, right? Matter of fact, even before all of that, didn't Kyrie Irving and KD pretty much say, that their team was so good that they didn't really need to be coached. So that tells you right there, they knew that team was so stacked that coaching was kind of irrelevant. So now, without uh, Kyrie Irving, now all of a sudden, they're, they're underdogs. You know, nah, bro. And that, 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 that ain't, that ain't I, can't, I can't go with that. No. No. What's happened is that this team has talented pieces, but altogether, it's not firing correctly. It's not working correctly. And a lot of that is coaching. But as I said before, I watched the Chicago Bulls. In 98, when all those guys were past their prime and Scottie Pippen was somewhere uh, supposedly, you know, mending from that injury when I think he was just holding out, still trying to renegotiate that contract of his, and it was just Mike and Dennis Rodman, and I saw Jordan hold that team together. And all you, all you saw, all they had on that team was Mike, Rodman, and a bunch of role players. Cool coach. That's it. And I remember Cool coach was missing some games through the injury. And somehow they still stayed with like the top two record in the NBA. Right? And and Mike was just playing with role players. But somehow Kevin Durant, he needs super soldier serum you know, enhanced players around him and shit. Fuck that, man. I don't, I, nah, bro. Mm-mm. No, this guy supposed to be the best player in the world. Everybody keeps saying that. Everybody kept saying he's the best player in the world, pot, p- potential top 10 all-time player, the greatest pure scorer, score all over the court, unstoppable force. Well, then, motherfucker, start forcing. You know what I'm saying? Even if you got to fucking shoot that motherfucker 40 times a fucking game. I saw Mike. When Pippen went out, damn the percentages. He had some ugly fucking shooting nights. He'll have a night where he shot 17 or 38. But he did what the fuck he thought he had to do for that team to win. You can call it ball hogging, whatever the fuck. He did what he had to do. And his percentages weren't great. But they got the W. Kevin Durant, I don't know, man. Like, he's a great scorer. But sometimes I wonder if he can go into extra gear as much as he, he should. 
He's shooting 59% from the floor, which to me tells me that he's possibly more concerned about his efficiency than going balls to the wall. Now, I, 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 and the reason why I'm saying this shit is because we get on Steph Curry about that. We got on Steph Curry about that, not going that extra gear. I remember people got on Giannis for not going that extra gear and figuring it out. And Steph already won titles, right? Steph already won titles, but Steph had to step up to show that he had that gumption in him. Kevin Durant, he do the same thing. He's the best player on this team. Fuck James Harden at this point, all right? I always focus on James Harden. That's cool. But my thing is, Kevin Durant supposed to be the man. Kevin Durant is capable, in my opinion, of dropping 35 a night. I think he needs to go into an extra gear. Do whatever it takes. The 1993 Chicago Bulls. I'll give them as a prime example. The year, the year before that, Mike averaged 30.1. It was the first time in his career in a full season that he came really close to averaging less than 30 points a game at that time. Why? Because the Bulls were that good at that time. You know, he didn't have to score and shoot the ball as much. You know what I'm saying? He could defer more. But the next year. They lost guys. Uh, they lost Cliff Levinston. They lost Craig Hodges behind that bullshit. They lost a lot of guys, Bobby Hansen and all the, the Their bench, what I remember, was old, and it was thin. It was old and thin. They had guys like, uh, what the fuck is that dude who's played for the Houston all the time? Um, I always forget his damn name, man. Uh, they had this old veteran from the Houston Rockets. I can't remember his damn name. Trent Tucker and... Uh, you know, uh, at that time, fucking John Paxson was fall, was falling apart, and the, the team was old, and 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 and, and the bench was weak. So <clears throat> Jordan and Pippen had to step up. Jordan averaged thirty two point six points per game that year. Why the huge increase in scoring? Because he had to make up for what was lost. That's why in the playoffs. Jordan averaged, if I'm not mistaken, he averaged 34, 35 points a game in the playoffs. 35 points a game in the playoffs in the 90s. 41 in the finals. Why he had to keep stepping up? Because as the as the teams got harder and more challenging, it demanded more out of him. He had to make up more of the slack. You know, not that he didn't do it, he didn't do it by himself. He had Horace Grant stepping up. He had Scottie Pippen stepping up, but a lot of it was on Mike. Kevin Durant need to do the same fucking thing. I don't give a damn about the coaching. Yeah, Steve Nash is a bad coach, but we've been saying that shit. Don't don't try to blame it on him now. Put that shit on KD. I don't give a fuck if you got a good relationship with Kevin Durant. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing with some of these analysts, man. They'll have a good relationship with a player. You know what I'm saying? Uh, give them access. So they go easy on him and shit with the criticism. Nah. Yes, KD's team need to step up. James Harden too. Step up. So that's all I got to say. Hell, he needs fucking two, three superstars all the damn time.